911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about how time is a useful illusion. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, if you've never heard of Jesse Elder, he is amazing. And I would recommend checking him out on any social platform that you can find. I remember first discovering him when I was looking up a meditation. I meditate regularly and I was looking for something different. Um, when it comes to meditation, having the ability to kind of deviate from our normal process of meditation helps to build the neural pathways. And that's always something that I'm trying to do. So that I'm giving you that backstory to just kind of explain how I even came to find this man in the first place. And he does have a YouTube video that he has up with that same title on it. Time is a useful illusion. And I was watching a TED Talk and that came up as one of the suggested videos. So I watched that and what he is talking about just blew my mind because he says that time is not linear. So what does that mean? He's saying that time is not something that we start out from point A and then we go to point B. And it really got me thinking because how could it not be? Like we're born and then we die. Like there's a start and there's a finish and everything in between that there exists time. Although that time we know is not infinite. But what he's talking about is very similar to the law of attraction. And he's saying how when we're coming up with something like a memory, for example, we're one of the, we're the only creature that has the ability to be able to use our cognitive mind and our consciousness in the way that we do. And he says that we can have something, and he uses this example of picturing yourself with um, having coffee in the morning and going through that process of making your coffee and holding the coffee cup and taking that first sip of coffee. And when we're remembering that, let's say you're remembering that from yesterday morning or this morning, we have the same ability to be able to remember that same thing from tomorrow. And he's, he's framing it in that way. We're remembering it for tomorrow. And it's almost like this premonition where we're coming up with these thoughts of the the memory that will exist can create our current reality. And I know that might sound like super far stretched. So just bear with me and I'll do my best to explain the way that I took in this information. And I remember when I first learned about the law of attraction, and yes, there are some precedents that are absolutely um, verifiable and then others that are just way too far out there for me to wrap my mind around, but that's not for me to tell you that's absolutely something for you to learn. So I'm just going to share one of my personal experiences with it. And for me, I used to drive an Eclipse and it was one of the newer model Eclipse. It was a 2005. I loved that car so much. I remember I graduated high school. I had a used car as soon as I turned 15. I was so, so fortunate that my my parents even bought me this used car. And there was a family that we were friends with and they were getting ready to move. So they sold me Um, the daughter's car. And that's what I drove up until I graduated high school. And when I graduated high school, my dad gave me the option. He was super proud of me. Both my parents were. And he said, Ashley, you can either buy yourself a new car and I'll give you the money to put as a down payment, but then you have to make the payments. I worked, I've, I've had a full-time job. Yes. Full-time ever since I was 15 years old. And so he said, the rest of the payments will be your responsibility or you can pick a friend. The only rule is it has to be a girlfriend and I will send you guys on a trip to Hawaii. So you make the choice. And yes, Hawaii sounded fun, but I knew that realistically it made more sense for me entering into adulthood to have a reliable vehicle. So I chose the brand new car. He took me to the dealership. This car wasn't even for sale yet. (laughs) It was um, in the showroom floor and I remember I was just so, so happy. And my dad was so proud to see me driving that car. And I love that car so much. It definitely served me for many, many years. It was the first car that I purchased, the first car that I ever paid off on my own, like all of the things. So what happened was when Clint and I got married, you know, you you start to 
develop the finances as a, as a couple and you start to go through the motions of combining all of your bills and doing all of the things. And I didn't have a car payment, but he did. And you're just kind of learning that whole process. And so after several years, I wanted a new car and I found this car and it was as soon as I saw this car, it was like, how could you not have this car? But <laughs> I'm sure we've all felt that with many materialistic things, but I've always been somebody who's been into speed and I have this high appreciation for vehicles. My dad taught me at a young age to take care of all of his vehicles. And so I wanted this car. But the only problem was that this was a stupid, expensive car. And I'm talking like ridiculously expensive. And I remember thinking like that could never be me. I could never be somebody who drove a car like that. But then in the midst of all of that, Clint and I read the the Law of Attraction. We started to watch repetitively the movie, The Law of Attraction, and understanding the concepts. And now I want to make this very clear to you. I do not in any way believe that by you thinking or well-wishing into your world that it's going to magically appear. However, I do believe that by planting a, a seed cognitively with anything in our lives, we do have the ability to reprogram and retrain our thoughts in a way to where every single day we are doing something that's putting us on a path that's moving straight forward to that thing. So by planting the seed of this car, I started to have this shift in my mindset after learning about this concept of the law of attraction. And it wasn't like, let me wish this to be. It was, okay, let me plant this seed to where it's so firm in my life that it becomes a reality. And what I did was I pictured that car everything about that car. It had to be white. It had to have black leather. It had to be like perfect. All of the heated seats, like all the things that I wanted. Okay. And I remember driving to and from work every single day and I would pretend that I was driving that car instead of the Eclipse that I was driving. And I remember very vividly picturing how the steering wheel felt with like the sports style steering wheel in my hands and how it felt to smell the new leather. And I also was very keenly aware of the exterior, how it felt to be driving this white car as I'm going to and from work. And Little by little, there were certain actions that took place, whether that be certain overtime or other things that came into play that actually made this a financial reality. And it it came a point, I think it was um, a Memorial Day weekend, and we were looking online just to, you know, let's just go see. Let's go, go check it out and let's see financially what kind of thing they have to offer us. And I remember we went to the dealership and they told us that they didn't even have that vehicle. And we were questioning that because we knew that they had it on 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 site and in the inventory. And so they had to go and look and they didn't even know that they had this car for sale. And they end up bringing the car out. I take it for a test drive. It's exactly what I visioned in my head. And I, I didn't even look physically at the interior of the car online. I was creating this image in my mind of all of the things and, you know, the the higher quality speakers and like all of the stuff, what the, the music sounded like coming through the speakers as I was driving. Like I really got creative in my mindset. And this whole process probably took about maybe six to eight months or so from start to finish, meaning that me saying, no, this could never be me driving this car to me ending up there in the dealership. And we did the financing and long story short, it ended up being a reality. And that car was so special to me. It was It was something that I had just finished grad school and it was as though it was this gift for myself for going to school. And as you listen to this, I I have gone to school, even summer schools, since I was in the seventh grade, um, just so that I can always get ahead. And education has always been something super important to me, but it, it was just, it was such a gift in my life that I did for myself. And as you listen, you probably don't routinely gift things like this to yourself. And maybe you don't gift anything at all. I know a lot of people who feel guilty for even going to purchase a pair of shoes because they they have families and they're always putting the thoughts and, and everything regarding their families above themselves. And that's very humble. and That's a great thing to do. However, I also believe that there are many times in our lives where we need to recognize that it's okay for us to do something as a gift to ourselves. And then 
why am I doing that? What does it do on the receiving end for me? And for me, you know, just going out and driving in my car with my music and myself and my thoughts, there is no better space in this realm that I could be in than than that for me personally. So that's the thing. That was the thing, the first thing that I started with. And I'm sharing all of this with you because I understand the concept that Jesse Elder is talking about with time being an illusion and then taking these thoughts cognitively of the future and having these sort of future memories because a memory is really no different from remembering something from the past, remembering something from right now, or remembering something from the future. And the key here, the trick to actually be able to use this as a useful tool is for us to conceptualize and for us to remember constantly. That might mean that you create vision boards or you print out a picture of that body that you want. You want to be fit. You want to be healthy. You want to wake up every morning, hitting your feet on the ground, feeling like you're a machine and you're ready to go for the day. Whatever that thing is, it it doesn't have to be something that is materialistic. It could be a change in your life. It could be a change in your world. Maybe you're not happy in your marriage. Maybe you're picturing a marriage that is completely different than the one that you're living in right now. And that could be with the same person you're with. That could be with someone else. But the truth is that we need to actually understand what the fuck we want for ourselves before we're able to move forward. And when we're able to see what that thing is and we conceptualize it and we create this memory of the future, that's what he's saying. He's saying that we can use this this illusion of time to be able to act as a benefit, as a resource for us, because it's something that we can aim at. It allows us to have something that we can actually set our target for, and then we can move the needle towards it. And little by little, we'll start to embody and develop certain actions in our life and in our day. And some of these are unconscious. Some of these are conscious, meaning that we need to sit down and we need to actually write out, okay, if I'm starting from not having the body that I want and the end goal is having the body that I want, then what is in between? And what are the things? What will work for me? And if we're not sure, then we seek out counsel from somebody who has that knowledge, who has that experience, and who's able to be there and support us. And I think that it's okay for us to not feel like we're being selfish for wanting. It's okay for you to want. More importantly, it's okay for you to need. You might not want that perfect body, but guess what? You need that healthy body. So maybe we're not talking about something that we want and we're considering the things that we need in our lives, the changes that we need to make, what's going to have the biggest impact on us in the short term, the long term, the people around us, the people that we love and the ones that support us. And um, I want to leave you on that note today. I hope that you're already having an amazing day and I will catch you later.